Good evening and welcome to the Millennium Stage. Tonight's program is presented in cooperation with Kids Euro Festival and the embassies of Luxembourg and Ireland. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage our first of two acts tonight from Luxembourg, Intrica.
Ladies and gentlemen, for our second act, please welcome to the stage, representing Ireland and the Maple Academy of Irish Dance, Marnie O'Callaghan Maple. Good evening. Thank you for inviting us this evening. We're delighted to be here to show you a, a little bit of representation of Irish dancing. Our first number will be St. Patrick's Day. The Crown. At dawn, the majestic sun comes up over the horizon, burning with a fiery glow. Colorful rays of light cut a path through the clouds, brushing away the fog and mist, spreading its warmth over the emerald green fields of old Ireland. This new light brings with it new hope, for the people of Connaught are without a queen. On this day, celestial spirits are awoken from their eternal slumber, called forth to crown a new queen. Slowly rising from their mythical tombs, the spirits carry with them a sparkling pearly white crown, which symbolizes a bright future for the people of this ancient land. They take hands and move with haste through the valleys and plains. Through Munster, Leinster, and Ulster they travel, but to no avail, they cannot find a suitable queen. With their compass outstretched, they head west up to the hills of Cruachan. It is here that they find Maeve, the warrior princess. Proud, strong, and brave, Maeve is named the chosen leader. The miraculous crown is given to Maeve, and her people kneel at her coronation. As she sits on her throne in her bronze pillar fortress, the legend begins. Ladies and gentlemen, the crown.
Thank you very much. As you can see, there are many different facets and forms to Irish dance. And just to give you a little bit of an explanation of what you've seen so far, the first dance was what we call a traditional Irish dance. And whatever part of the country you would be in, be it England, Ireland, Africa, anywhere throughout the world, that dance would be done the exact same way. The second dance that, you, that the girls did for you was a specially choreographed dance that was put to a, a mythological type of tale, an Irish tale. So Irish dance has many different facets to it and form. The next dance that they will show you will once again be an individual choreography that will include a different type of shoe. In Irish dance performances, there are two types of shoes. There's the soft shoe, which is like a ballet shoe, and it's called a ghillie. And then there's a hard shoe, which has a fiberglass tip and, tip and heel, and it allows the dancers to rhythmically beat out the different steps, very similar to different parts of tap. So once again, we have a, quite a selection of different types of Irish dance that we're going to show you just so you can see how diverse Irish dance actually can be. The next dance the girls will be coming out is called Pigarua, and it's adapted from some of the famous tunes that you've heard of, like uh, dances that you've heard of, Lord of the Dance and River Dance. And once again, Lord of the Dance and River Dance sort of evolved Irish dance. Prior to that, Irish dance was pretty much limited to more uh, Irish immigrant type countries, England, Ireland, the US, Canada, and Australia. But with the evolution of River Dance and Lord of the Dance, Irish dance took on a whole new world arena and a world stage. The music and the dance evolved and it became much more trendy and popular. So the next dance, if the girls could kindly come out, which they will perform, will be called Pigarua.
Thank you very much. We have two more numbers that we'd like to share with you. Uh, some of the girls have to change shoes and they will be out, but that will give me a chance to explain a little bit about their attire and what they're wearing. No, they do not all have curly hair. Irish dancers wear wigs. Um, years ago, the, uh, dancers used to curl their hair the night before and they would have to sleep in these rollers so that they would have that curly hair. And as, as time has evolved and, and people's schedules have been a little bit busier. They have now have the wigs, which makes life a lot easier. They just put the wig on before a performance or a competition. But curls has always been a part of the Irish dancer look. Um, costumes have evolved over the years. Uh, for this number, they had a simple number, which was kind of representative of that river dance, Lord of the Dance look. But the girls will be coming out momentarily in some of their solo costumes. Uh, the dancers that are here today are all championship level dancers that are, many of them are world competitors or national competitors and very successful competitively. Some of them will be coming out in their solo costumes and a solo costume for an Irish dancer can range up to $3,000. So it's quite the investment and, and of course parents like that their child will practice in order to have this valuable solo costume. Um, so once again, two more numbers, and just to tell you a little bit more about the Irish dance, as I had mentioned, with the evolution of River Dance and Lord of the Dance, there are many different shows that have now spun out of that, and um, we're pleased to say that dancers with uh, the Maple Academy have participated in many of them. Um, our own son has been performing with Lord of the Dance, and some of the other dancers, one is currently down at Disneyland. Um, they have an Irish dance show down in Disneyland that she's performing at. And then um, there's, my son has even gone to Taiwan to perform with Irish dancing. So the great thing about River Dance and Lord of the Dance is it really made it a worldwide phenomena, which allowed it to become more multicultural and now it's open to everyone who just wants to get up and dance and keep time to the music and, and have a good time. So once again, there are two final numbers. The next number, the music is adapted from, uh, it's called Woods of Old Limerick, and it is adapted from the different Irish dance shows. Thank you very much.
Thank you. Thank you very much. We have one final number of the evening that we'd like to share with you. And this is called Dueling Violins. The tune is adapted from Michael Flatley's Lord of the Dance, which I'm sure everyone has heard of Michael Flatley or Lord of the Dance. Uh, it, will, it will include a mix of soft shoe and hard shoe dance. Um, we've been delighted this evening to be part of the Kids Eurofest. And for anyone that enjoys Irish dancing and would like to see it again, our area, the D.C. area, is hosting the World Qualifier Championships this December. It will be held at the National Harbor Hotel, uh, in National Harbor at the Gaylord Hotel. And it will be the first full weekend in December. So if you'd like to see a little bit more Irish dancing, please come and join us. It's the first full weekend in December. And we hope that everyone has enjoyed the performance, and thank you for coming. Thank you. 
Thank you very much. We're the Maple Academy of Irish Dance, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you.